AI is everywhere now, dominating conversations, headlines, and workplaces. Everyone's talking about large language models, tokens, agents, and other important terms. But here's the thing. These terms come up constantly, yet they're rarely explained in simple, clear language. Many people hesitate to ask, even though they'd love to hear a quick, easy explanation. Today we're changing that. In the next minutes, you'll get clear, straightforward explanations of the 10 fundamental AI terms everyone should know. By the end, you'll confidently join any AI conversation without that lingering question mark in your mind. Of course, each term could fill an entire deep dive video, so if you want more, just let us know in the comments. Let's dive in. Artificial Intelligence, or AI. AI is the big picture term for machines that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. That includes things like understanding language, recognizing images, making decisions, or even driving a car. From your phone's voice assistant to smart email filters, AI is already everywhere. It's not one single tool, but a massive field with many specializations in it. To make it clearer, imagine a set of nested circles. The largest is artificial intelligence. Inside that sits machine learning, then deep learning. And within that, generative AI, the tech behind tools like ChatGPT. To sum it up, AI is the umbrella term that technically includes many of the other terms we'll cover in this video. Let's move on to term two, machine learning. Machine learning, or ML, if AI is the umbrella, machine learning is one of its most important parts. It's the idea that machines can improve their performance through experience without being explicitly programmed for every single task. In traditional software, you write rules and the machine follows them. In machine learning, you give the machine data and it figures out the rules by itself. A classic example, you feed a model thousands of photos labeled cat and not cat. Eventually, it learns to recognize what a cat looks like. Even in new pictures it's never seen before, machine learning powers things like recommendation systems, fraud detection, language translation, and yes, even the AI tools you use every day. It's not magic, it's math, data, and patterns learned over time. Now that you get the idea behind learning from data, let's level up to term three, large language model. Large language model, or LLM. This is the engine behind tools like ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini. A large language model is trained on massive amounts of text, books, websites, articles, and conversations to learn how language works. It doesn't just memorize. It recognizes patterns and relationships between words, so it can generate human-like responses to almost any prompt. You type a question, and it predicts the most likely next words, one after another, at lightning. That's why it can write emails, summarize documents, explain complex topics, or even role-play a historical figure. The large part refers to both the size of the training data and the number of parameters. Internal settings the model adjusts as it learns. Some LLMs have hundreds of billions of these parameters, allowing for incredibly nuanced understanding and generation of language. Now here's something else worth knowing. When people say AI model, they're often referring to an LLM, even if they don't use that exact term. And while LLM specifically means a large language model, the term is sometimes used loosely to include other types like small language models, multimodal models, or vision language models, VLMs. Still, in most everyday discussions, when someone mentions an LLM, they usually mean the big text-based systems like GPT-4 or Claude. In short, LLMs are what make modern AI tools feel smart, flexible, and conversational. Speaking of what makes them powerful, let's break down term 4, parameters. Parameters. Parameters are like the tiny adjustable knobs inside an AI model that determine how it processes information. Imagine you're teaching someone to recognize animals. Each time they get feedback, they adjust their mental settings to improve. AI models do something similar, except they have billions of those settings and they adjust them mathematically during training. In an LLM, like GPT-4, parameters help the model decide which words are likely to come next, how formal a sentence should sound, or what facts to emphasize. The more parameters, the more nuanced and powerful the model can be, though it also requires more data, more compute, and more fine-tuning. But here's the twist. More isn't always better. Sometimes a smaller model with fewer parameters can outperform a larger one, especially when trained on cleaner data or optimized for a specific task. So when you hear this model has 70 billion parameters, just remember, that's a measure of its capacity to learn patterns, but not a guarantee of quality. Ready for term 5? Let's talk about what controls the style and creativity of those outputs. Temperature. Temperature. No, this has nothing to do with heat, but it does control how creative or safe an AI's answer feels. 
In AI models, temperature is a setting that affects randomness, usually on a scale from 0 to 1. A low temperature, like 0 0.2, makes the model behave more predictably. In fact, responses at low temperature are more deterministic, meaning if you ask the same question twice, you'll likely get the same or very similar answers. At higher temperatures, like 0 0.8 or 1.0, the output becomes less predictable and more diverse. You might notice very different wording, different phrasing, or even a different take on the topic altogether, even if the prompt stays the same. It's like turning a dial between precise and reliable versus creative and expressive. Both have their place, low for clarity, high for brainstorming. And yes, depending on the model and how you're using it, you can often adjust the temperature setting yourself. Now you know what people really mean when they say, try adjusting the temperature for different results. Context window. When you interact with an AI, how much information can it handle at once? That's defined by the context window, the total amount of tokens the model can process in one go, including your input and any previous messages. A token is a small unit of text, like a word, part of a word, or punctuation. We'll explain tokens properly in Term 7. Older models were limited, just 2,000 to 4,000 tokens at a time. But today's systems are way beyond that. GPT-40, GPT-4.1 can handle up to 1 million tokens, Claude 3 Opus supports around 200,000 tokens, with enterprise versions going higher. Gemini 1.5 Pro also supports 1 million tokens or more in testing. That means you can feed the AI entire reports, books, or years of chat history without splitting it up. Now what happens when you hit the limit? Most models won't keep every word exactly. They might summarize older parts to save space, letting the AI remember the general idea, but struggle with exact wording. There are also emerging techniques to solve the memory limit, external memory modules, smart document retrieval, and more, but that's a deep dive best for another video. If you're curious, drop a comment and we'll make it happen. Token. A token is not the same as a word. It's a small chunk of text, usually a word fragment, a whole word, or even punctuation. AI models don't read text like we do. They process language as sequences of tokens. For example, the word banana is one token. The word unbelievable might be split into un, believe, and able. That's three tokens. Even a comma or emoji can be a token. So when we say a model has a 100,000 token context window, that doesn't mean 100,000 words. It's usually about 70-80% of that in actual words, depending on the language and phrasing. Why does this matter? Because everything you input, your question, past messages, and the AI's own answers, all take up tokens. And once the token limit is reached, the model has to forget or compress earlier parts. That's why understanding tokens is key to knowing how much context an AI can handle, how much it costs to run, and how long it can stay consistent in a conversation. Prompt. We actually made an entire video just about prompts. Feel free to check it out if you want the full deep dive. But here's the short version. A prompt is simply the input you give to an AI model. It can be a question, a command, a paragraph of context, or even an entire conversation. Basically, it's how you talk to the AI and how it knows what to respond to. For example, summarize this article. Write a poem about space travel in the style of Shakespeare. What are the key risks of cloud migration? All of these are prompts, and the way you write them has a massive impact on the output. Prompting is both an art and a science. The more specific and well-structured your prompt, the better the response tends to be. This is especially true when you add context, set a role for the AI, or include formatting instructions, COT, chain of thought, for reasoning, RIC, for structured responses, or TRICK, for maximizing clarity and control. These are practical tools to get more consistent, useful results, especially in professional use cases. Also worth knowing, many models use what's called a system prompt in the background. For example, a system prompt might tell the model, you're a helpful assistant who answers concisely and politely. It's a powerful way to guide responses consistently and one of the key tools behind agent style workflows. So next time someone says, just prompt it differently, you'll know what that actually means. Fine tuning. Fine tuning is like sending an already trained AI model back to school with a very specific curriculum. Instead of training a model from scratch, which takes huge amounts of time, data, and in many cases millions of dollars, fine tuning takes an existing model and continues training it on a smaller, targeted data set. 
This teaches the model to specialize, whether that's learning a company's tone of voice, understanding legal language, or mastering product documentation. For example, if you take a general purpose LLM and fine tune it on thousands of internal HR policies, it becomes far better at answering HR related questions because it's seen more examples that match your use case. There are different levels of fine tuning. Instruction tuning teaches the model to better follow human instructions. Domain adaptation aligns the model with industry specific knowledge. And LoRa, low rank adaptation or adapter layers are new, lightweight methods that let companies fine tune large models more efficiently without massive compute costs. That's why fine tuning is becoming such a hot topic in enterprise AI. It helps bridge the gap between general intelligence and domain specific expertise. But just remember, fine tuning isn't the only way to use an LLM with your own data, and in most cases, it's not even necessary. There are other approaches, especially something called RAG, short for Retrieval Augmented Generation. We'll explain how that works in another video, so stay tuned. And that brings us to the final term for today, inference. Inference is the AI model's moment of truth, what happens when a trained model applies what it has learned to real-world data. It's the process of running new input through a model to generate predictions, classifications, or any kind of output. Training teaches the model patterns. Inference puts that learning into action. Every time you type a prompt, ask it to summarize text or run an analysis. It's inference working in real time. Inference transforms a static model into a functioning tool, like a car engine starting up when you turn the key. It's fast, dynamic, and responsible for delivering meaningful results swiftly and interactively. Inference is essential because it's when the AI turns training into usable, actionable output. From the AI terminology we've covered, AI, ML, LLM, parameters, temperature, context window, token, prompt, fine-tuning, inference is the final step where everything comes together in the real world. And that wraps up our list of 10 AI terms everyone should know. We'll definitely do another video with more essential AI terms soon, but first, we've got a few other exciting topics lined up, so stay tuned. Whether you're deep into tech or just starting your journey, here on AI Vibes we make sure you get the theory and the real-world application clearly, practically, and without the jargon. If that sounds helpful, hit subscribe, share this with a friend, and let us know in the comments what AI topic you want us to break down next. See you in the next video.